working together, forging partnerships, solving problems, creating safer neighborhoods. It's the power of a block club, and it starts with you. A block club starts with one neighbor talking to another, one neighbor taking the initiative to recruit others to improve the quality of life on their block. There's no question what can be accomplished when people work together. That's why the block university is important to tell people that drug dealers and gangbangers are not going to take your child or grandchild or your children on your block. I am standing up to that 15-year-old punk. I'm standing up to that 22-year-old who lives in the suburbs area or outside your community. This is my block. I've invested in my home. This is my American dream. Chicago is a national leader in creating block clubs, and there are no plans to stop. In February, CAPS launched a major campaign to get more people, more block clubs on board. So we've gathered here today because block clubs represent what's good and what's best about our city. We've gathered because block clubs represent the power of what happens when we stick together. And then lastly, block clubs represent the bright light of our city. To start a block club, it takes determination and a strong commitment to your neighborhood. And that's exactly what's driving 27-year-old Eric Haramasio from Gage Park to organize his block. Well, the goal is to bring the community together, you know, and make sure the neighborhood's safe for all the children and all the adults of the block, plus the neighborhood. First the block, then the neighborhood. Eric says his neighborhood has changed over the years, and not for the better. Gangs moved in. People aren't as friendly or taking care of their property as well as before. He's hoping his block club can change that. Well, I want it back to the, the way I saw it before. You know, everybody talks to each other, everybody take care of their house and, you know, make sure the neighborhood's safe for the kids to grow up in, you know, just, you know, how I saw it when I was a kid. Eric started by meeting with a CAPS community organizer who gave him tips on how to conduct a canvas. Since then, He's gone door to door signing up neighbors and identifying problems that need to be fixed. From dark lights to cracked sidewalks to picking up garbage. Eric knows this is just the beginning and there's a lot of work ahead. But he believes it's all worth it to make life better for his family and his neighbors. Thanks a lot for your time and I look forward to working with you later and thank you very much. Block clubs get started for a number of reasons. The Frains from Belmont Gardens decided to take action and get involved after a brutal attack on the family. My sons were blood, just solid from here all the way down, socks saturated, and holes through faces from the brass knuckles. Colleen's sons, Kent and Scott, were attacked three years ago coming home from a long run on a hot summer night. It happened a few doors down from their house. A group of young gang members swarmed the boys, attacking them, claiming they were in charge of the block. It did shock me because I always had the sense that my block was a very peaceful and quiet place. And all of a sudden, this turned the whole experience of my block upside down. After the shock of the incident wore off, the Frains decided, instead of hiding in fear, they were going to reclaim their neighborhood. I said, you know, I don't know what's going on here. I just didn't see... I think I was like many people where I'm living my life. I can either stay in isolation and denial, kind of hidden in my own home, or I can step out with the tools that are available to me through CAPS and start to help organize the neighborhood. Colleen mobilized her neighbors. They held meetings, started a phone tree, and began community projects. One of the first projects, cleaning up the area around a viaduct, separating the Belmont Gardens and Hermosa neighborhoods. Then they decided to paint a mural on the viaduct. An artist created a theme of unity and peace and outlined the picture on the walls. Now, during the spring and the summer, residents paint and bring the mural to life. What started out as one block club has now grown into a neighborhood association, encompassing 16 blocks. Out of such a, a horrible incident like this, that can come, you know, such 
um, warmth from people, such working together, such goodness. One of the keys to a successful block club is building a positive partnership with Chicago police. Block clubs can be a critical link to the police to help prevent and reduce crime. It's community and the block clubs who are helping the police find the murderers. We will work together with you. It is the community who is putting the pressure on offenders, forcing them to surrender. In Chicago, block clubs are making a difference. From solving crime issues to fostering security on the block, they can also create beauty and make people feel welcome to come out of their homes and be part of a neighborhood family. I see that the, the residents are more committed to where they live at. They're not closing their doors and they're not turning their heads and saying, I'm not a part of this. They're actually saying, this is my neighborhood. We refuse to let them tear it down. Our block club is great. It's wonderful. It gets everybody involved. We come together to do fundraisers. We come together to uh, contribute to the community, to homeless shelters, to uh, battered women's shelters. Uh, we, of course, have social activities. I'm doing it for the block. I'm doing it for every child that's out here. I want to see the children being able to go up and down these blocks, being able to actually enjoy the block and enjoy the areas. There are block club success stories from every part of the city, but one block club has an exceptional story to tell. In 98, we were deemed the worst block in the city of Chicago, and that's a bad title to have. We've had gangbangers, we had drugs, open market drugs, we had killings. That was our biggest problem. We had so many young people to lose their life in those few years. Ten years ago, Betty Jo Swanson and her neighbors on 79th and Carpenter in the Auburn-Gresham area said enough was enough. They wanted to take back their block. So they band together, formed a block club, and fought back. So we started coming out, cleaning up, sitting on the front. If they stood, we stood. And if they run, we asked them, should we run too? Swanson and her group work hard to get a large apartment building filled with drug dealers, squatters, and prostitutes torn down. Now a parking lot stands in its place. They also got new lights and a cul-de-sac installed at one end of the block to stop cars from speeding down the block. They also work with the neighborhood housing service to renovate homes that were in dire need of repair and sell them. Years of hard work have paid off. Now a block that was once deemed the worst in the city is now considered a model place to call home. All the people and the young people go out have fun, our children go out have fun, no violence, no nothing. You just look, look feel comfortable when you walk out the door and come home. They had no fear and it's, it's good. Was that really us? And said, okay, if we were there then and where we are now, what did we do right? But whatever it is, we're going to keep trying. So we had to do something right. Participation in a block club has gone a long way in making Chicago a world-class city. But for every block club that is organized, there are two or three that have yet to recognize the power that can come when neighbors work hand in hand to keep their streets safe and beautiful. Block clubs represent what's good and great about the people of Chicago. Not only that, but block clubs also represent the power of what happens if we dare to stick together.